you would like 2,000. You figure that maybe the House actually will, will pass something like that, and then we'll see what the Senate does. How do you expect that to play out? Well, I don't think there's any question that uh, we'll pass that uh, this afternoon. But, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the Senate's certainly a, a different, uh, different animal, and it's, it's all a question of uh, how much pressure they'll be feeling over there. I know that, obviously, they are very much focused on uh, the, the election in Georgia on January 5th, and uh, they, they feel, and I, I'm not sure, but they, they believe that uh, what happens in Washington is, right now in terms of providing relief is going to impact that election. So uh, I would say the odds are better that the Senate will do it than they otherwise would be. But um, still, to, tr to try and get um, that many votes and to get 60 votes is, in the Senate is very difficult on any occasion. It, it, I mean, it does kind of sound like you agree with what President Trump was saying. When was the last time you agreed with something that, that he said? <laughs> no, it's very infrequent, I will guarantee you that. But, you know, the, the biggest problem here is we, we certainly have a dysfunctional Congress right now. And, and with this administration, every negotiation we've had is not a two-way negotiation. If that were the case, we would have solved these problems months ago. But every negotiation is a four- or five-way negotiation. And one of those partners is very unreliable, very impulsive and unpredictable. So, you know, we, we passed bills in May. We passed a bill in, uh, in October. And then Nancy Pelosi has been negotiating with uh, Secretary Treasury Mnuchin for months. Uh, Mitch McConnell was not involved in those negotiations. Neither was President Trump. So when, when uh, you negotiate something in good faith and then uh, the president drives the bus over everybody, that makes it very, very hard. I, you know, people out in the country are looking at some of the, the antics of the, of the, the House leadership and, and wondering what, what was going on, too, in terms of, you know, turning down $1.8 trillion and, you know, now accepting 900 So there's plenty of that to go around. How about well, the blame yeah, for... Me, how, about me, the blame, me, how about the blame for the How about the blame for the $1.8 trillion. That was never yeah. a real offer. Well, what was Mitch a real McConnell offer? Called well, it debt, Mitch McConnell called it debt on arrival. Uh, so, you know, what again, was the, how was do you negotiate when you don't... There would have been something if she, if she would have, if she would have moved off a of two point two. She would. We would have taken the one point eight trillion in a minute if it had actually been structured in a way that made sense. What that was was basically giving a blank check to Secretary Mnuchin to spend any way the administration wanted to. There was right. very little business support, small business support. All of these categories that you just well, enumerated right. were not targeted in that in that bill. So yeah. again. It, if, I mean, I both sides had, we would both, both sides had, you know, liability on one side and then state and local yeah. stuff on that. I mean, we, we've heard all, all, all that, but it didn't get yes. done. And now, now, now she's happy with, now you're happy with 900. But th that's neither here nor What about the Oh, earmarks? nobody's the, happy with 900. Well, <laughs> signing it, it's going We're, through. What yeah, about well, earmarks? That's, that's, the, that's the reality of politics today. Uh, that's the best we could get. And while people were suffering and businesses going out of business, uh, we took what we could get. And uh, again, looking at a new administration, feeling that at least we'll have an administration that wants to do much more in the coming months. What, what uh, about earmarks? Did you specifically have any earmarks? We had Senator Heitkamp on, and, and she made, you know, she made a, she blamed it on leadership, said that that's the only way the individual members can get their own priorities passed is with earmarks. So one side, it's like, it, it, who's to blame for all the pork? It, people are, both sides point, point at the other for what's going on. Can, can we do it any better than what we're doing it now? Are, are there things in this bill that shouldn't be there, Congressman? Oh, you know, um, I'm sure there are. And I'm sure that not one member of Congress has read off 5,593 pages. So, yeah, there are plenty of things in there that shouldn't be in there. But, you know, we set uh, a year, over a year and a half ago, we set uh, the, the overall, the top line discretionary spending limits, and we respected those in, in this appropriations bill, $1.4 trillion. And, uh, but, yeah, there, you know, I, but that's true of every appropriations bill uh, in, in every Congress. I think one of the things that we are looking to do is restore actu the actual process of earmarks so that there is total accountability and transparency. That's what, uh, that's what we really need. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.